welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to the studio of Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. 10x your business starting today with digital marketing from Just Minding My Business Media, LLC on JMMB Media TV or Mindset Movers TV. JMMB Radio at gmail.com. Beware of little expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship. Benjamin Franklin. Today, we welcome to the mic financial professional, Mike Newmeyer. Mike Newmeyer launched Newmeyer Consulting in 1983 after leaving a VP position at McCormick and Company. From 1983 to 1998, Mike consulted with over 100 companies in the United States and Canada regarding corporate training and financial matters. Since 1998, Mike has been a financial professional specializing in retirement. He has presented over 300 informational seminars and helped his pre- prepare his clients for financial freedom so they can live their best life in retirement. Mike also regularly volunteers his time as an educator on retirement related topics in his community. Welcome, Mike. Oh, thank that you. all out. <laughs> Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, just this morning, I heard that Social Security is going to be depleted in 15 years. So what they're advising is the young people need to figure it out. So do you have any thoughts about that? Well, first of all, we've heard these kind of reports many times before. And uh, those guys in Washington uh, and gals that run the Congress, the most important thing to them is their jobs. And there is no way that they'll let Social Security fail. No matter what they have to do to fund it, it'll be funded. I have no, no issues or I don't have any confidence that it'll ever go away <clears throat> for, for those reasons. Okay. If, you ever, if you ever interviewed uh, any member of Congress and asked them if they would vote, you know, for ending Social Security or vote for not continuing to fund it, you're never going to find one that will say yes. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, so they just scam people, huh? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, maybe so, yes. Yeah, because I, I saw that on the news this morning and I, I was like, oh, wow, I definitely have to ask Mike about this today because they're saying it's going to be depleted in 15 years. Uh and I'm like, that means the younger people, they have to figure it out. And on that note, um, what do you think in terms of younger people really taking their, uh, their retirement seriously at a young age? Well, I wish they would. I wish they would. I think that uh, more people have 401k plans and things like that today than ever before. No question about that. But that's also part of the population growth. You know, so there's more people doing it, but um, uh, yeah, I wish they'd take it more seriously. A lot of them are, you know, we have a lot of automatic signups now in companies, so you almost have to sign out not to get into a plan. Uh, but I don't really think that um, that an, enough young people take the whole matter seriously. Now we we have more people. We have more people attend seminars. We have more people call with questions, you know, from my radio show and so forth. But it's, it's not, look, I'll tell you what, we have a lot of folks that are approaching retirement age that don't take it seriously. Yeah. So it's, it's not just young people. The answer is I wish everybody would take it more seriously, you know, especially facing the kinds of things we are today with increases in taxes and probability of downturn in the economy and so forth. If you're not saving for retirement, if you're not saving for retirement, you know, and if you've forgotten that you are your own bank, you are your own bank, you're the one that's in the end responsible, then you're really risking your future. 
Mm -hmm. So I do have a question along that line. Sure. You're saying that many people and even older ones who are approaching retirement don't think about their retirement. Is it because they're not thinking about retirement or that they're so caught up in the moment of just trying to survive? Are you asking why they're not thinking about retirement? Is that what you're asking? Yes, because a lot of ones who are approaching retirement, sure. especially look at the time, looking at the times we're living in right now. That's right. It's really sort of a hand to mouth kind of situation. And for many so, people, yes. Yeah. So how do how is that more the case than people just simply not retire thinking about retirement? They can't afford to think about retirement because they're just trying to survive. Well, you know, the American culture is to spend money. There's, there's no question about that. And, and uh, I've been preaching for a long, long time that we have to live below our, below our means. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, the, some of the best uh, uh, people in the industry have always said you save 10%. If you save 10% between your 401k and, and other savings, uh, you're, you're doing okay, you know. Uh, but, but the reality is that about over 50%, and I've heard numbers much higher than that, of folks over 50 have less than $10,000 put away for retirement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you start to think of numbers like that, and um, uh, I, I think they take it for granted. And there's, there's people that are just planning to live on Social Security. There's, there's, there's a lot of different things going on. Uh, but, uh, you know, and now we're facing inflation. If you're not really putting a plan together, and that's what I preach on the radio all the time, if you don't have a plan, you know, pro procrastination is not a plan. So you've got to work with a professional to put together two things, a budget and a, and a savings plan, and ultimately an income plan. So you got a budget, what's it going to cost to live, and so forth, and then where's the money going to come from? Mm -hmm. And if you're faced with those two you know, with those two things, then you can make adjustments in your lifestyle, hopefully, to accommodate those realities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do people connect with you in order to start to begin to create that plan? All they have to do is call me. It's, it's very simple. And uh, we don't charge for time ever. I've never charged anybody for time. Whether they become a client or not is not the issue. So if, if they want to come in, set an appointment, come on in, sit down and, and talk about their situation, bring their statements with them so we know what the realities are that they're dealing with, and then a list of questions. They need to have a list of questions because that's essential. And that's the beginning. That's the beginning. Where it goes after that is it depends on what we're looking at. Okay. And what's the phone number? and address to come in. Sure, 410-902-0464, 410-902-0464. And the address is 220 Stan Lake Road, 220 Stan Lake Road, and that's Owings Mills, and that's 21117. Now that's the address today. Now uh, we just had a subdivision and the old address was 601 Academy Avenue. It's the same location, but the correct address is 220 Stan Lake Road. Okay, okay. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about your radio show that you sure, had. Sure, sure. Um, first of all, give us a little snippet of some of the things that you talk about. Well, we talk about things like roadblocks to retirement. We talk about you know, whether you should rely on the market for retirement, which is a whole bunch of variables and uh, ups and downs and that sort of thing. It's, it's whether that makes any sense. So that's on one side. And then we talk about how to have secure retirement income by using the products that we use, which are safe money products, where they can get guaranteed lifetime income for themselves and for their spouse and, and so forth. We talk about techniques like laddering in investments so that they anticipate an increase in, in expenses later on. They can then tap into those, those uh, income sources later on or let them grow depending on their situation. We talk about health care. We talk about Medicare. We talk about Social Security. We talk about almost anything that relates to financial living and what's going on. 
So we talk about insurance. We talk about, uh, you know, uh, Medi- well, I said Medicare, but we also talk about life insurance and, uh, and all, you know, permanent insurance versus time, you know, term insurance. Uh, we, we, we try to give a lot of tips for people if they're not going to come in and see us, at least they benefit by listening to the radio show. And they can call in with questions, and they do. And, um, and they can also sign up, you know, on our, on our email list. And we send out, you know, um, uh, emails with, with, with videos. And we, we talk about our website where they can go and, and, and tap into almost any topic they want to. And, uh, and so forth. So we, we have a lot of information sources that we make available. And we do a lot of mailings. So if they want to sign up for the mailings and for the email and all that sort of, all they have to do is contact us. Okay. And how can people listen to your show and when does it come on and all like that? Oh, stuff? sure, sure. Okay. So the name of the show is Game Plan for Retirement. And it's, it's on Saturday morning at eight o'clock in the morning. It's on 102.3 FM. And it's also on 1470 AM. It's broadcast out of Westminster. So it, it doesn't reach everywhere, but mm-hmm. you can also stream it, you know, if you want to do that. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. You can do it that way, or you can listen to it directly. Okay. So it's on the, most of the major podcasts on um, yes, the sites. Yes, okay. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. I mean, because I mean, retirement is, I mean, as we can see just recently, everything is skyrocketed because of the pandemic. That's correct. That's you, correct. What you used to spend at the grocery store hundred dollars for is now one hundred and fifty dollars. Inflation is a big problem, uh, and it's not going to go away soon, no matter what the government says. You know, they were late, late coming on that there even is inflation. They were in denial for quite some time, and they don't have a really good fix on what it is today. You know, consumer price index is not reflecting the kind of inflation that you're experiencing, I'm in, experiencing when we go to the grocery store or the gas station. And if they continue on this tact, we're facing more inflation. And so, uh, you know, what you got is increasing demand and, and re- redu- reduced, uh, you know, uh, production. So supply and demand are, you know, are not having a good uh, relationship. And when you have inflation, part of it will always stay. It's, it's just like the, it's just like uh, the gas stations. They price their gasoline on the replacement cost. We, we, talk about, we talk about just-in-time inventory. That's true about wholesale and retail. And then what they do is if the price comes down, they're not gonna take it all the way down. They're gonna take it down partially and they're gonna watch their competitors. They're gonna see what their competitor does. So if the competition basically holds it and doesn't reduce it or reduces it partially, that's what they're going to do to be competitive, but they're always going to keep some additional margin. You know, that's, that's the way it works. Then, then if the economy goes down far enough, which it will, then at that time, they may reduce it to gain some volume over the competition. But inflation is a game that every seller plays. Okay. And, and very few ignore inflation. I mean, and very, and very few that, you know, do not raise their prices, even though their costs may not have gone up. So inflation is a, is, a, is a very difficult thing to live with. And if we slow the economy, if we slow the economy far enough, we're going to end up in stagflation. So stagflation is where the economy slows down to a trickle, but inflation continues. So there your demand is not really going up because, mm-hmm. because we have this stagflation going on and unemployment isn't getting better in that situation. So, so you're still having inflation without increasing demand. And, and that's, I don't wanna to get too much into the weeds on these things, but that is that is a distinct possibility. Right now, right now we're in a bubble. Right now we're in a pink cloud. Things look great right now, but don't bet on that for the future. Don't count on that for the future. If you think you're gonna use your, your, the market for retirement, let me tell you that it's not gonna be constant. You're going to have ups and downs. And if you take money out of the market every year, every month, the same amount, you're going to be eating into your principal during some years. And then when you've done that, you've lowered your base. So as time goes on, if you keep on taking the same amount, you're going to be in trouble eventually. Eventually, you could run out of money. That's the biggest fear for people retiring. 
is running out of money. I mean, I hear it everywhere. And we use products where you can't run out of money. You cannot, you cannot. It's lifetime income, it's guaranteed, it's insured. The market's not insured. You know, the market is not insured. You can't insure against ups and downs. I say to people, okay, you like the market, you plan to stay in the market. So do you have anybody in your family or friends that are gonna make up for the losses if you have losses? Do you know anybody that will write you a check for those losses so you can continue to take money out of this on the same basis? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I've never had a yes on that one. I've never <laughs> had a yes on that one. I'm sure because most people aren't going to do that. You know? No, I don't know anybody who's going to do it. <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> this is a lot to think about. Sure. You know, and, you know, for our listening audience, you know, we want you to be very serious about your future because, you know, I went to a seminar one time and the guy actually itemized everything that you will have to pay when mm -hmm. you retire and nothing really changes. If anything, it goes up because well, most of the time yeah. when we're in the retirement mode, we got some ailments. We've gone back and forth to the doctors. We're getting prescriptions but we still have to eat. We still have to keep a roof over our head. We still have to pay utilities and all. So the, the expenses don't really go away. Oh no. That's I mean, absolutely correct. And you know, with, with taxes the way they are, okay? Remember this, that, that taxes are a regressive thing for people that are on fixed incomes. If you're retired, you're getting social security and maybe you got a pension if you're fortunate and you're taking money out of the market, to live on if you were. And let's say you were able to take it on a continuous basis. But with inflation going up, that's a regressive tax. That's a tax in your money. That's a tax, in, and it's actually imposed by the government, okay? It's the Fed that, con that controls rates. That's the government that's controlling rates. So we can say, oh, we're gonna raise taxes, but we're only gonna raise tax on the top 1% or 2%. Well, uh, that's not the way it's gonna work. They're already paying like 70% of the taxes anyway. So if we want more dollars, we're going to have to have the middle class, you know, fess up with the money and belly up to the money and borrow and give the money. And that's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. And the people that are below that line are the ones that are going to be hurt the most. OK, they're going to be hurt the most because inflation hits the commodities first. And the people in, in the lower class incomes and the middle class incomes are the ones that buy the commodities. They're not the ones that buy, you know, expensive vacations and so forth and so on, or less and less of, of those kinds of things. And if you have to buy food, make a decision before between buying food or, or going on a vacation to Las Vegas, which is a double-edged sword, because you'll lose money there too. <laughs> then, then you got to really think about those things. So it's aggressive. The less money that you have to spend, the worse inflation is on you. So even if they don't raise your taxes, even if they don't raise rates, we call marginal rates, the higher, the higher, you know, the rates go, the more money. What if they, what if they leave the rates the same, but apply them at lower income levels? They can always say, well, we didn't raise taxes, but they're taking more money away from you. So these things are very slippery, you know, and, uh, and language can mislead. And uh, so you got to be very careful. We have to take care of ourselves first. If we don't take care of ourselves first, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be a burden to our family. You know, it, it's goes go down. How would you feel if you were in, in a Medicaid nursing home because you didn't take care of your money? You know, not even your family would want to go to visit you because it smells so bad. I don't think that's such a great future. But that's a future that a lot of folks are facing. And the ones that take care of the money have a better chance of not going into that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you know, the nursing homes and places like that, depending on how you want to live, they're astronomical. Oh, they are 100000 a year now. That's why people go to Medicaid, because they haven't got the money. You know, you, you might have a million dollars in the bank. That means in 10 years, if you're paying for it yourself, you're out of money. And 10 years from now, it's going to be a lot higher than, than 100000 mm -hmm. You've got to have... You know, you, you, you may have long-term care insurance. That's wonderful if you do. The cost of that goes up every year too. Mm -hmm. the, the products that we use for folks for retirement income have long-term care benefits. 
They have long-term care benefits. They're not astronomical benefits. Obviously, the more money they've got in these products, the more of the benefits are. So that's all good. And, and they take care of it. They'll pay you even for home health care. You know, so if you have to have a visiting person, professional, you know, once or twice a week, your family may be taking care of you part of the time. You know, you can get the benefit of these of these kinds of, of um, you know, uh, incomes that are, and it's paid directly to you. So if you were in a nursing home and so forth, you get that money from, from our sources, from the insurance companies, no matter whether you're in a facility or not in a facility, if you're at home or you're in a facility, you're going to get paid. So that's very helpful. We have a lot of people that, you know, that's a very big thing. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people that don't take these things seriously. Well, I'm not going to live that long anyway, that kind of thing, right? They're probably going to outlive us all. <laughs> so they're going to be the burden, you see. Uh, our products have accelerated death benefits and have provisions so that if you become ill, you get your money. If you need it, you can take it without any penalties. You know, that's the kind of situation suitable for people that are 50 and older that want to look forward to a retirement. You got to get flexible products that have different benefits. You don't get that from the market. The market is unforgiving. You know, it doesn't care whether you're rich, poor, mm-hmm. doesn't care anything about that. Okay. It's going to do what's going to do. And the people that are the wealthiest are the ones that take the money out first. And that's when the market goes down. So who gets hurt? Who gets hurt? The retirees that are depending on the mutual funds and the market. And so are the people in 401ks. They are the ones that get hurt. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. So, so go ahead, Ruth. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so as you talk about people being retired or working towards retirement, so many older ones are working much later in life. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely true, yeah. So how do they get the help that they need to plan for when they really do have to stop working? Well, the same people, the same as the other people as well as coming to see me. I mean, I help people plan. Uh, you know, yes, you're absolutely right. Longevity is here. Aging pop, but aging population is happening at the same time. So you got to be living longer, which is wonderful for healthy people, but it's mm-hmm. not so great for people that have, you know, that have Alzheimer's. And, and, and so there's more of a burden on families. Part of the reason that people are working longer is to take care of somebody else in the family that has problems. So it's all over the board. And, um, you know, so I try to take into consideration the total situation with people when they come to see me. You know, there isn't a, you know, one fits all kind of thing. So you have to look at the different situations and, and figure out what's suitable, what's the best thing that we can do for these people in, in their various situations. And then we have to review it. You know, we have to review it because change goes on, right? So you ought to at least once a year. And, and we give them a tool where they can record all the information about all their documents so that if somebody has to help them later, it's all there. It could be their spouse, could be somebody else. So we have a, a device where they record everything in writing and they can hand it to a, mem- a family member. They can hand it to their spouse, whatever. It, but everybody in the family that's involved knows where that information is. You know, I have people that come to me that, you know, forgot about an old 401k 20 years ago. You know, that kind of thing. But what if that person died? We would never have found it, possibly. So yeah, I could tell you stories all day. People, you know, take so much for granted. We live in, a, in, a, in an overwhelmingly prosperous society compared to lots of others. Right. And so we kind of just take things for granted. You know, we're spoiled in some ways. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, we have to take care of ourselves and not be a burden to everybody else. There's ways to do a lot of different kinds of things. And, and so that's, that's, uh, th- th- that's a real fact. And I can show people lots of different kinds of techniques and approaches that can be used. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Yes. So again, how do people connect with you? Phone number, address? Sure. Sure. Okay. So it's, the phone number is 410-902-0464. Four ten nine zero two zero four six four. I'm in Owings Mills. I'm easy to reach off of seven ninety five or five minutes off of seven ninety five. Uh, so it, it, it's we're very simple to get here. You know, off of Franklin Boulevard. You know, you cross over Owings Mills coming off of seven ninety five and 
and a couple of turns and you're here. Or you can come up 795 from, from the, uh, the south and get off at Owens Mills Boulevard and then it's a five minute ride from there. So, but we provide information. If somebody calls us, we set an appointment, we email them directions to make it as simple as possible. We give them a list of things they ought to bring with them for us to evaluate. Uh, so that's all there. And then of course, uh, uh, they can go on the website and they can, get, they can get to us that way. If they listen to our radio show, they're gonna hear a different phone number because that's the phone number that radio people, people listening to radio call in and, and then we're told about those calls. But the direct number is the 410-902-0464. And uh, we're open Monday through Thursday. We're closed on Friday. So we make appointments for people in advance and we try to you know give them the time they want. And we try to always allow at least one hour to meet with people. And depending on the complexity of their situation, it can be more than that. So the ideal time, if you can do it, is probably around 11 o'clock in the morning. You know, because at 11 o'clock in the morning, we, I've cleared my desk and I can concentrate. And then if I, if I set aside two hours, that usually accommodates most folks. Mm, okay. Absolutely. Okay. And how can people access your radio show? What's the name of it and the okay. time of theirs? The name is Game Plan for Retirement, which is my DBA doing business as. That's you'll always see Game Plan for Retirement. It's New Meyer Consulting is the company. Game Plan for Retirement. That's the name you're going to hear when you when you call the phone num phone in and so forth. Okay, you can you can access the show on Saturday morning at 8 a.m on 102.3, 102.3 FM or 1470 AM. Okay. So one hour show, so one hour show, you can call in with questions uh, and then we'll get back to you. We don't take questions on air, but you can call in with questions and then we'll get back to you. Oh, okay. And yeah. it's also streaming on the major podcasts. That's exactly correct. That's so you can, so that's on demand. Yes, absolutely. All righty. So thank you so much, Mike, for taking time out of your day to share your financial wisdom and professionalism with our audience. We truly appreciate it. And we're definitely looking forward to having you back so that we can get more tips and juicy information to help us to plan for our financial freedom. <laughs> well, it's been a great pleasure. You know, absolutely. I love to talk about these things because this is what I live, you know, so mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for being there. You know, thanks for, for us having this session. Absolutely. Your business through Just Mighty My Business Media has exposure on internet radio, major social media platforms, and now TV. Through Just Mighty My Business, dynamic digital marketing platform. Don't listen to the word on the street. Hear it for yourself. Visit jmmb.assistedcircle.org to learn how you can take your business, your vision, to the next level. Voiceovers by RCH Voiceworks for when you want to be heard. Call 443-620-4115. for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. We hope you enjoy the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.